What is up all you cool snakes and neonates? How's it going? I hope you're all keeping well. Got a pretty cool one today. We've got some rehousing to do. So we'll do a little update on the new geckos. So without further ado guys, let's get into it. Roll that intro. So I picked up this uh, fish tank here for free. Someone was giving it away. I was like, "That's uh, that's fine, beastie size. That is, I could use that." So yeah, let's uh, tear it apart. I'm gonna try and take all these chrome bits off and things like that. And if I can't manage to take them off, I'm just gonna paint them black, make it aesthetically pleasing, because I don't like the sort of silver look to it. But um, yeah, it's got a nice little curved front on it and things like that. So I don't know if we're going to have a spider in here. I think we're going to put the stick insects in here first until I decide what I'm going to do long term. But yeah, let's uh, let's tear this apart and see what we can do with this uh, this old fish tank. See if we can give it a new lease of life. So this is it so far. The silver bits I'm going to paint black. It's exactly the same size actually as the smaller Exoterra. We have the satanic leaf tail gecko in. I've cut out the perspex. I've cut out the vent. So they're going to sit on here like this. Um, we have a glue gun, we just don't have any glue for it yet. And what I'm going to do is I'll run a bead of glue along there. I'll glue the vent to that. So that'll be your sort of ventilation of it right the way along there. Um, I'm going to get a couple of latches or something made up or clips. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to clip it down. But for the meantime, it's only stick insects going in. They're not terribly strong and they definitely wouldn't be able to lift this up. I may tape that on for the time being or something with double sided tape, I'm not entirely sure. The only thing is the smallest ones might be able to fit through that mesh I've put on there. So I'll put a bit of kitchen roll over the top of that, which is what I was doing on the old one anyway. Yeah, that is what we have so far. I love a bit of upcycling and I think that is going to be pretty cool when it's finished. Um, I may get Kirsten to... Uh, put her magic touch on it because she is awesome at uh, decorating vivs. As you can see, the stick insect situation has exploded. I'm in the middle of cleaning them out. They're all in amongst those leaves and in there and stuff like that. Yeah, I think they need an upgrade. There's more stick insects and less room. And it's also a bit of a, an, uh, a, a trouble when I'm changing over, they're taking out their old leaves and putting in their new leaves. So I was thinking, we have that spare fish tank that's just been donated. So let's throw stick insects in there. Boom. And this is what we've achieved. So what I ended up doing was put, drill a couple of holes and just put a cable tie on that. As you can see, it's not ideal. It gives me, but it gives me a handle to lift it up with and it keeps that in place until we get that glue gunned in. Once that's glue gunned in, I will still leave that there because it will give me a little handle to pop it up with. But I'm pretty happy with that. There's a couple of stick insects in there. We need to put some more in there and then give it a spray down. Uh, one thing I have noticed is that they like to drink droplets, the water droplets off the side of the enclosures is how they get a lot of their moisture. I've noticed that. Um, anytime I spray it down, they always jump on it. But yeah, that's, um, that is one upcycled uh, fish tank there, guys. I love that sort of curved front end on it, too. It sort of adds to that sort of effect, I think, actually. Um, a very nice enclosure, just simply for some stick insects. But that's pretty cool, guys. Pretty cool. And that's them all in it. Got a wee spray. You can see them drinking from the water droplets on the side there. As you can see, I've put a little pot in there, so a double-sided sticky taped a little um, sling transfer pot to the floor and put the privet in it because they don't eat it as fast as the privet dries out especially in this house so that'll be make it easier for me to water the uh, the privet that they eat and um, make it last a bit longer for them too keeping maintenance down but there's a before and after of their enclosures Certainly an upgrade for them, that's for sure. And the same person 
that gave us the fish tank that we just converted for the stick insects gave us this 45 by 45 by 45 exoterra amazing free of charge put it up on an app that i'm on i've got these free i was like i'll take them i can use them so i cleaned it up there was a bit of a, a hide thing siliconed onto the side i got that off the side heated it and got a stanley blade down and uh, popped that off the side cleaned it all up got it looking lovely as you can see and then kirsten with them being her geckos i was like you can do this. You can do the decorating part. And I'm ashamed to say it, as you guys can see, she's kind of showing me up a bit, hasn't she? That looks fantastic. My uh, When I try and decorate enclosures, it usually looks like granny farts. Um, that looks amazing. So I think in future we're going to get Kirsten to do all the animal decorating. What do you guys think? Put your comment down below and think, and uh, if you think that Kirsten should do the rest of the animal enclosures and uh, do all the decorating from now on. So they were getting along just fine, but we separated them because they're beautiful animals and I didn't want them fighting and we wanted them to like him not to tear chunks out of her or vice versa. We wanted them to thrive, especially while they're settling down and things like that. So this is what Kirsten has made in here. You can see her just sitting up there. Now we chose to put her in the bigger one. A couple of reasons for that being, like I say, we do plan on breeding them eventually, or we're, we're thinking of breeding them eventually. If that's the case, of course you want to put them, you want them to breed in the bigger enclosure in case, you know, they fall out and she needs a way and she can get away and there's going to be plenty more hiding spots and things like that put in there. Um, so if she wants to get away, she can get away. Also, the fact is you want to put the male into the female's domain so that she's more comfortable and she's in her house and she feels a lot better and safer rather than put her into his. So that's why we chose to put her, even though she's smaller than him, into the bigger enclosure is for sort of future preparations. But look at her, that's her favourite spot up there on that vine. She absolutely loves that vine. And um, she hugs it. But there is our pretty Chahua Gecko, isn't she beautiful? But yeah, so that is the update on her and that fantastic enclosure that we got given um, from this that lovely lady. Um, on the WhatsApp groups, if you're watching this, thank you very much. That is what has happened. Of course, with the Chahua Geckos, I didn't mention in the last video, but whenever I'm using exoterras, as you can see, I always cut a bit of perspex and block up the vents. That one's open. Sorry, Mr. Nubbins. Mr. Nubbins just collided with my foot there. What are you doing? Silly man. He's running about like a dafty. You're a silly man. Ain't you a silly man? Oi. Ooh, look at you. Look at you. <laughs> silly lad. There is, so yeah, anyway, perspex on that, perspex on that, and there's perspex underneath on that one because there's a hole in the mesh, so we glue gunned it underneath, and it's all glue gunned underneath, so that's all blocked off there as well. Um, if we feel like we need to for humidity and temperature purposes, we'll block them off a bit more. The same was done to the exoterra the Amazon tree boa is in. Classic, so they are doing absolutely great and looking the part there, guys. What do you guys think? We also got the male, and we're going to get the female as well. Um, I think it came up Amazon, I can't remember. But that's a little thing that suctions onto the side for putting their foods into and all that kind of stuff. She's going to have one of them as well. She just has like a silicon in sort of dish. They're really good with uh, human interaction. Um, Kirsten has been blending up fresh fruit mixes and freezing them. As you can see here, she's been spoon feeding them. They are her babies, and she's taken that to an extreme. <laughs> They are spoon feeding. Yeah, that's right. And they're spoilt rotten. Um, but they deserve it. And we want to do these animals justice. Just like all the animals in this collection. Isn't that right, Mr. Nubbins? What? <laughs> we have Mr. Nubbins out on Stick Insect Patrol. Since doing that Stick Insect enclosure, I've been finding them all over the living room. So any on the floor that may have escaped, I think Mr. Nubbins will take care of them. Although, we keep the locusts are kept in there. And he spotted the locusts in there, ran up to it, licked the tub because he thought he could get to the locusts. So I fired him all the locusts. And now he is literally just sitting, staring at it, waiting 
for the locusts. There are no more, buddy. There are no more locusts, my fat little man. There aren't. Hmm? Mr. Nubbins is a fantastic little man. He has firmly secured his place in this family. He's a fantastic character. He's just amazing. But you're not getting any more locusts. Go and hunt down the stick insects. So guys, hope you all enjoyed that. As always, like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell button, share the page around, all that good stuff. You guys know what to do. From me, Mr. Nobbins here, and the rest of the gang, take it easy. Peace. Nubbins out. Hi, I'm Mr. Nubbins. This is my shack pile rug. <laughs> See you later.